What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the All Things Nerd Podcast. We're your hosts. My name's Chad. I'm Jake. This week, we're going to be talking about WandaVision, Episode 8. And uh, we do have some breaking news for you this week. Uh, by the time you hear this, it'll have been a couple of days old. But Amber Heard has officially been fired from the Aquaman 2 movie. Justice so, for Johnny. Hashtag Justice for Johnny. Uh, before we get into today's episode... We are sponsored this week by Crybaby Craig's. This is the best damn hot sauce around, a full-flavored pickled habanero and garlic sauce that truly goes on anything. We're also sponsored by Ray's Energy Drinks. It's the highest rated energy drink on the market. Uh, Zero sugar, zero calories, and zero crash. Now, let's get into it. This is the All Things Nerd Podcast. All right, welcome back, nerds. Uh, like we mentioned, this week we're going to be breaking down uh, WandaVision Episode 8. Uh, kind of before we can jump into this episode, it's a little bit of a slower moving episode, even though it's the longest episode in the season so <laughs> far, clocking in like 47, 47 minutes. 47 minutes. And I think that's including the credits and that stuff. That is including so. the credits. So realistically, it's about 40 minutes or so. Um, but before we do that, we should kind of recap just roughly how episode seven ended episode seven had a huge ending um yeah so at the end of episode seven is uh when wanda goes over to agnes's house she ends up in the basement uh kind of in like a dungeon lair looking space uh agnes comes around the corner uh tells wanda Mm -hmm. You didn't think you were the only magical girl in town, did you? The name's Agatha Harkness. For those of you that don't know or haven't seen up to this point, there's going to be spoilers ahead. So please, you know, if you yeah. haven't watched episode 8... If you haven't watched it yet, go watch it, yeah. come back and listen. Pause this, go watch it, come back, finish the episode. Uh, but Agatha Harkness was a witch during the Salem Witch Trials. Uh, Which I feel like we both... Already knew already. I mean, we did. We mentioned it. Yeah, we, we kind of saw it early coming. predictions, but it was kind of a a very blatant yeah Easter egg that was leading to the big reveal. Yeah, but we finally get it. And when it happened, it was glorious. It's just as exciting if you didn't know. I feel like yeah. yeah. I got so, goosebumps. Oh, yeah, was... oh, it was so great. <laughs> uh, Agatha snaps her fingers. The doors slam behind her, and that's pretty much the end of the episode. There is an, an end credit scene, but it doesn't really relate to what happens in this episode, so we won't talk about it. Um, but so, season eight opens, and what's happening right off the bat? Right off the bat, the first thing that we see is uh, Agatha back in 1890... 1693. 16, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> uh, 1693. Uh, yeah, we said 1700s. Why would I go to 18? Dumb. Anyways... Uh, 1693, the show Agatha, she's being dragged through the woods, uh, by some people in hoods. They tie her up to, uh, a post and basically start accusing her of being a witch or they ask her, are you a witch? And she says, yes. And then, uh, the kind of the ringleader of the people. Yeah. Um, they accuse her of betraying her witch coven. Yeah. Uh, and breaking laws by practicing dark magic they all take their hoods off it turns out that they're all actually witches from her coven one of them she calls mother and i feel like we should talk about it because i know i don't know if she means mother as in like her mom or mother is that like the head of a coven i don't know it could be either because they don't really go into it they don't uh the lady is old enough to be her mother they do they do do a really good job at making um What's her name in real life, damn it? Uh, Catherine Hahn. Catherine Hahn. Uh, look like she's probably like 20 years old. Yeah, they, the they do a really cool. good job of uh, de-aging her a little bit. I mean, she still doesn't look as old as she is oh, hell no. yeah. in real life, but they do de-age her really well. Um, and they're basically 
calling out crimes against her for like practicing dark magic, practicing magic. That was above her like age and they say station, but yeah. the way that it comes across, like basically her age and her status as a witch, like where she ranks in the coven, things like that. She denies it. And then the, the oh, head yeah, she kind of plays around for a little bit. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, and, I didn't and, do anything wrong. Yeah. She's trying to play the victim. But finally, the, the head witch, whether it's her actual mother or just the the head witch of the coven is like, that's that's it. Enough deception. Yeah. And Agatha's like, well, I didn't technically break any rules. They just kind of bent to my will. And then these witches just basically, I mean, I guess it would, I assume it would be what it would be like if witches were to burn a witch at the stake. They yeah. basically just like shoot like beams of like witchcraft out of their hands yeah, it, into I, Agatha. The way that it, that I saw it was that they're basically performing like a, a sacrifice ceremony to, yeah. to kill her because yeah. she's broken the rules uh, performed, you know, learned dark magic that they don't approve of, but they want to acquire her power, magical power, yeah. so that it doesn't get wasted, I so guess. So cannibalism. Kind of. Yeah. Without the whole, like, munching on skin yeah. part. The Is... the chewy, the other, other, other white meat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, so. If anyone's seen the movie Extreme Days, it's a, it's a fluff film from... Probably the year 90, 1999. Hilarious. Uh, it's a reference to that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but so the witches are basically trying to take the life force out of Agatha. Yep. She starts kind of screaming in pain at first. And then she just kind of like... Ca you kind of get a little smirk out of her. Yeah. A little bit. She like kind of like stops like, eh, this actually doesn't hurt. And then all the, the lights that the witches are like shooting towards projecting her, onto her yeah. are blue yeah and agatha kind of like smirks just kind of like looks at them and then the beams of light start to turn purple from her body go back to them back to the witches and then you see the witches basically just start like not decaying but like aging, aging? very yeah. aggressively aging is the way, yeah imagine like their life force is just being sucked yeah. out of them if you've seen raiders of the lost ark <laughs> yeah it's like that, but it doesn't go so far as the faces melting off into <laughs> full skeletons. But they basically, yeah, they age super quickly and become, like, mummified. And then die. Yeah, they fall down and die. Yeah. And during this time, the, the head witch, she kind of starts to, like, fly above all of them. Uh, she exerts, like, all of her power. Uh, there's, like, an energy field that goes around her yeah. head. In, it looks like a crown, uh, probably just as a symbol of her being like the, the head witch. Uh, I did read online that it might relate back to, it kind of looks like an Atlantean crown, kind of like the lost city of Atlantis and the magic involved there. I don't know enough about that to actually talk on it. Which but it, sounds it, weird because I feel like some people might be like, oh, Atlantis is DC, but it's also Marvel because yeah. it's not the same. You don't get, you know, Arthur Curry and all that shit. But yeah, you, there you're not is gonna get Atlantis Aquaman, Marvel, but there is and... a... I mean, just because that's myth and lore, yeah. just in human nature to begin with, um, that's where Namor comes from. He's one of the first mutants in the comics. It's the Marvel version of Aquaman, for anybody interested in that knowledge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like if Aquaman was bred with Dracula, with the slick back hair and the super yeah. deep Vs. Uh <laughs> Like the deep V that goes past the sternum, almost yeah. to the belly button, yeah. but not quite. Yeah, because that'd be weird. It's like a red carpet dress for a really <laughs> attractive woman, but put on a a dude. <laughs> but anyways, uh, the head witch is flying. Uh, she's, she's trying to suck the life force out of Agatha because all the other witches are dead. And what does Agatha do? Well, I mean, she sucks the life force out of Mother... And uh, she also drops to the ground like a like a, decomposed a sack of potatoes. Sack of decomposed potatoes. The Irish know all about that. 
And that kind that kind of <laughs> that kind of ends the, like the opening scene, really, and then we from there we get the Marvel like you know introduction and then uh, we go into back to the where we were when episode seven ended, which was back in the basement with Agatha and um, Wanda. We'll call her Wanda for now. Yeah. <laughs> We'll get into this, but it was a huge reveal. (laughs) Uh, We finally get Wanda to be related as, or referred to as the Scarlet Witch. Yeah, we'll get to it. We'll we'll get to it. There's a lot more to it, but it was so exciting. Yeah. uh, Because we all knew it was coming, especially the second that Fox was bought out by Disney. I was actually really mad at you because when you... uh, told me about the episode you really underplayed it so again chad watches these at like three in the morning on thursday nights i don't get to watch them until a day or two later and when chad snapped me about the episode he's like oh, it was a pretty good episode and i was like oh, it sounds lame and i watched it and i was like oh, to like i wasn't multiple parts i wasn't <laughs> as physically moved as i was with last week yeah. where the my week before, heart was pounding the week before was he was like breath. pacing in his apartment and he's like oh my god that episode is so crazy so then now he like downplayed it this week and i was like you dick <laughs> yeah but still was, super good it was amazing fantastic episode, episode still uh <laughs> uh but so wanda tries to fight back tries, tries yeah it doesn't last very in long. the in the basement her powers aren't working. Yeah. So Agatha explains that it's because she's put a hex or a charm. So if you recognize in the episode before, episode 7, uh, when Wanda goes down into the basement, you see some symbols on the wall, uh, high up on the wall. She kind of looks at them. They kind of like make sure that you see the two or three symbols that are on the wall. Uh, those are basically a hex that Agatha put on the basement. And if you are the witch casting a hex, then another witch cannot yeah. perform witchcraft in that hex or whatever it was. Yeah, it so. basically makes it so that it's uh, it renders any other magical user, sorceress, sorcerer, uh, powerless. Yeah. And Agatha kind of pokes and prods at Wanda at this point like, oh, you don't know what this is? This is super basic yeah. magic. How do you not know this? Which I think, I I mean, I gather from the episode and, well, the whole season so far and everything we know about Wanda so far in the movies anyway, is that she doesn't know that she's a witch. Right. Yeah, right, right. She thinks that she just has... A power. Telekinesis powers yeah. and telepathy, basically. So, she so can Agatha, control people. Agatha is like... How are you doing this? How did you do any of this? And yeah. referring to the hex. Yeah, and that the the hex as in like the, the boundary around the town of Westview where this entire show is taking place. Agatha even says that when she felt the presence of all that magic happening at once, that's why she came there. Yeah. Uh, and Wanda tries to like get inside of Agatha's mind Mm -hmm. and she's like you have no power over me you never have yeah basically meaning that Agatha was just playing a part on her own just to Mm. to try and fit in because she didn't know exactly what was going on yeah she was so what Chad's saying is that throughout the season uh when you see Agnes slash Agatha uh, and she's playing the part of like the neighbor or whatever. She was never at any point under Wanda's uh, spell. I guess we can say spell now. Now that we know she's a witch, yeah. Uh, she was never a part of that. She was just playing along so she could see what the fuck was going on. Yeah, she basically wanted to learn more about Wanda's power and understand it because she wants the power for herself. Yes, and she gets pissed at. Wanda in the basement and starts saying like, "How are you doing it? You have, you have uh, people under your spell miles away at the edge of town, which we saw 
in episode six with the Halloween episode. When Vision yeah. goes to the edge of town and the people are on a loop that we were talking about, uh, you know, those people are under Wanda's spell too. And that's like the most powerful shit that Agatha has ever seen. So she's like, how are you doing this? Yeah, she she uses the phrase at one point like, "You your magic is on autopilot. Yeah. Like, how are you doing this? You're running complex spells on thousands of people miles away from you. Everyone's interacting as if they're all intentionally put under the same spell with the same parameters, but it's so automatic. And Agatha just wants to know what's going on. Yeah. So she decides, well, first she starts to ask Wanda, like, how are you doing this? Wanda says, no idea. I have no idea. Agatha uses her magic and like throws her around the basement. Slaps her around a little bit. And she's like, well, if you're not going to tell me, What was the thing that you said to your brother? Brother. We also learned that Pietro, uh, Evan Peters' character, is not actually Pietro. Which which we all knew. We knew, but we didn't really know the extent to it. We still don't know who he is. She does make a comment where uh, Wanda says, that was you, and then Agatha goes, no, not me. Maybe just my eyes and my ears, or something like that. Yeah. yeah, She's basically just controlling Pietro just enough to try and learn what's going on, which relates back to the Halloween episode when he asks uh, Wanda, you know, like, how are you doing this? Yeah. Like, what's going on? Like, how do you do this? Which was her just trying to figure out, like, yeah, it was what just she knew. Yeah, Agatha know? fishing a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but, so, Pietro's not Pietro. Agatha even calls him Pietro, yeah, for fake, fake Pietro. Pietro, yeah, uh, and Wanda's still like, I, I don't know, and Agatha's like, well, what's that thing you told your brother when this all started? You felt alone, despair, nothingness. So let's start there. So Agatha starts to like form a portal out of the basement plucks a hair from Wanda, which is a really neat tieback to anyone that's watched uh, the films. Uh, in Thor Ragnarok, when Thor and Loki go to New York to find Odin, uh, Loki gets incapacitated. He basically gets put into a never-ending pit. I've been falling for 30 <laughs> minutes! But Doctor Strange... Uh, Agrees to help Thor find their father so that they can get him and then leave Earth. Yeah. But in order to find Odin, he requires a strand of Thor's Thor's hair. Yeah. Because he has to use that to tie it into his spell to create the portal so that it can lead him to a place that has that connection. Mm -hmm. So that same sort of thing happens in... WandaVision. In WandaVision. (laughs) Sorry. With uh, Agatha to create the portals into Wanda's memories. Yeah, she takes a hair out, turns purple, and then she kind of throws it, or not throws it, like, uh, lets it go, and it, like, moves, (laughs) 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 and it, like, moves through the air, hits a door in the basement, the door starts glowing purple, and it transforms into, from, like, a dungeon-looking door into your average door suburban door it just looks like a white door to an apartment now before we talk about what happens once they go through the door uh let's take a quick second let's talk about one of our sponsors this week which is crybaby craigs yeah so hey you nerds do you love spice supporting small businesses what about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods If you said yes to any of those, our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com 
and order yours today. So, uh, Wanda and Agatha go through the first door. Uh, what There will be a couple doors. Sorry. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, they go through the first door and basically we get to see um, Wanda's parents and her brother. Well, yeah, and her brother. And uh, they kind of show that her dad is trying to sell like some um, VHS tapes of like old sitcom tv shows and vhs dvds basically yeah. just uh english sitcoms because they're sokovian mm -hmm. which in the mcu is uh it's a made-up eastern european yeah. nation that's under civil war so to make money he sells all this stuff yeah so then they show them doing like a basically like a movie night like we're gonna watch something as a family and they all sit down and watch it and it's you know like uh i don't even know what that show is uh they they watched uh the dick van dyke show dick van dyke yeah so a very famous uh 60s sitcom yeah uh starring dick van dyke and mary tyler moore uh very reminiscent of the the style that episode one of wandavision yeah. is yeah shot in mm -hmm. you know they're watching the dick van dyke show they're enjoying it as a family uh and then it's it gets super like dramatic like there's background music playing you see a young wanda like smiling looking around looking at her brother her parents even though they're in this war zone yeah like literally you there's a one scene where you can where they look out the window and you see and hear like shit going and on. you hear like gunshots in the background yeah all that stuff but then the music kind of kicks in it gets all like happy like dark oh, and ominous happy family dark, i know this <laughs> again because it says on Cause, the screen because your closed <laughs> caption i watch my tv with the subtitles on and it says dark ominous music playing i wouldn't have called it dark and ominous i would have just <laughs> It's very cinematic. Yeah. And then you hear a crash and everything from one side of the screen to the other just flies across as if, well, not as if because it's what actually happened, as if part of their apartment gets bombed. Yeah. And an explosion goes off and everything flies. Yep. So then you get to see Wanda and her brother, Pietro, laying under, it looks like the dining room table. Uh, it's under a bed. They're... Was it a bed? Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> They're laying under some furniture. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you see the Stark Industries uh, bomb basically land like right in front of them. And it says Stark Industries right on the side of it. And they kind of lay there and you see the red light blinking, which Wanda has mentioned in Age of Ultron, that they didn't know whether or not the bomb was going to go off. They were waiting uh, quietly for the bomb to go off, not knowing for two days whether they were going to die or not. Um, this is a, also a little bit of a callback to the first uh, episode of WandaVision in the commercial when you see the Stark Industries microwave uh, commercial. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing is in black and white except for the red blinking light, which yes. resembles the bomb. And Wanda kind of, like, reaches out for it, like she's trying to touch it, and Pietro stops her. No. Some, something stops her. Agatha drags her out of there. Oh, that's right. Agatha, yeah. like, snaps her out of, like, this memory. And she's like, did you stop the bomb? And yeah. we never really get to see, like, we if she did never get a definite answer. Like, yeah, she asks uh, Wanda, like, how did you stop the bomb? Did you put a hex on it? It's kind of implied that Wanda is already a witch and just doesn't know it. Yeah, so the big deal has been, up until now, that because of licensing and rights and stuff like that, because Fox owned, technically owned the rights to the X-Men, which Wanda and her brother Pietro, uh, also known as Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, are mutants. And so... When they, when Disney's Marvel put 
uh, Wanda and Pietro into the MCU. They couldn't call them by their X-Men names, and they also could not call them mutants. So they gave yeah. Wanda and her brother their powers from the Infinity Stones rather than from a mutant, uh, the mutant gene. Um, but now that Disney has the rights to the X-Men, in this scene they show that Wanda had her abilities long before she ever touched the Infinity Stone. Yeah, so it's hinted that she did actually stop the bomb. They thought it just never went off, that it was defective. But it's hinted that Wanda actually stopped it without even knowing because she didn't understand her powers. So they're kind of... Agatha and Wanda are standing in like this destroyed ruins of... Wanda's childhood home. Agatha turns or like creates another portal door just in a wall and it looks like a like an underground like it's the fallout base. shelter. Yeah. It's it's the uh, Hydra base. That was in Sokovia that we first saw Wanda, Wanda and, and Pietro. Pietro. Uh in an it was a end credit, end credit scene. scene, yeah, where they're they was, say like, was what about that in Iron Man three or Thor? Ooh, Dark World question. It's in one of the. It's in a movie. It's in one of the movies, <laughs> uh, in the MCU. I think it's Phase Two, before. Right, Age it of was Ultron. the movie before Age of Ultron. What would the movie be before Age of Ultron? It's got to be Cap. No, Captain America two. Ooh, no. it, yeah, it might have been Winter Soldier. No, because the was. end credit scene in Winter Soldier was. Oh, it might have been. I think it was yeah. Winter Soldier, now, yeah. now that you say that. Um, but anyways, it was a movie before Age of Ultron. Uh, the end credit scene shows Wanda and her brother. Um, and they also mention um, the guy. Strucker. Strucker, which was the name of... The Watch from yes. the second episode. Yes. So Strucker is the one who basically introduced the twins to the Infinity Stone that gave them... I air quoted for the camera. You guys didn't see it. Their powers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that gave them their powers. But so then it, Agatha and Wanda go through that door portal. Uh, <laughs> I don't know which drink to grab. Can't decide which <laughs> one to go for. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not as drunk as I normally am during these. Uh, so they go through the second portal. Uh, and it is the actual moment that Wanda is exposed to the Infinity Stone. Yeah. Which stone is it? It's the Mind Stone, right? It is the Mind Stone, yeah. correct. Um, and so... Was it... Wait, no. Because in the... Because mm-hmm. it's... What is, ends it, up is, the test, is the Tesseract the Mind Stone? No, that's the Space Stone. Because in the episode, it's the Tesseract. It's in the Scepter, and it comes out of the Scepter. The Scepter? It was in a blue casing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. But it was not the actual Tesseract. Okay. You're wrong. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. You're wrong. Don't, don't, be, <laughs> don't be sorry. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, so we actually see when Wanda first interacts with the stone, uh, They it shows... No, you're wrong. I'm not wrong. You are wrong. 100%. Because it's the same... Because they break the casing and then they put the stone in the vision's head. No, because in... Age of Ultron, Tony touches the Tesseract, which is in the Scepter, and he it's gets not a... It's the Scepter. It is the Scepter. No, because in the Avengers, Loki has the Scepter, but the Tesseract is in the, the machine that creates the portal. Look it up. We'll wait. <laughs> I don't want... Yeah. We'll we'll cut out the the time that it takes you to look it up. Only because I want to just no. Be, I'm, I'm I just right. want to be sure. I I, I agree with you. Hold on. I don't clearly agree with you. you don't. I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, I'm right. Okay. <laughs> Read it out loud. <laughs> all right, you got to cut out all the middle part there. Shit. Okay. Chad is right. Fuck myself. Oh, weird. Uh, I'm right. That's so the, weird. Who would Thor have... subjected himself to a vision which clarified that... The, no, but this isn't answering the question that I was asking, which is... Whatever. I believe you. Yep. What the hell? What is going on there? 
Does that does that hurt you a little bit? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm the one who read the comics. <laughs> like I feel like I should have. It known might that. be different in the comics. No, it wasn't. I just I'm wrong. <laughs> we'll just yeah. say, I'm just no, gonna admit it. I was wrong. Okay. Say that again. I was wrong. Can okay. we move on? Yep, we can move okay. on. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so, uh, Wanda walks into like the testing room. There's a, a couple of scientists and doctors monitoring her. Uh, basically, she starts walking into the room, and then we get uh, not quite a point of view perspective from Wanda because we still see her in the shot, but the the blue uh, moves out of the yeah pops out of the scepter, zooms towards her, and then it, it she touches it. No, doesn't she reach out for it? I feel like she touches it, and then it she might. Yeah. I don't remember. Now that you at, now, now you got me doubting myself, I'm wrong about everything. <laughs> <On> everything. Yeah, <laughs> but the the blue casing explodes away, and then you see the mind stone hovering there. Yep. For just a second, and then there's this glorious, glowing light scene in yeah. front of uh in front of Wanda, where she basically sees herself. Yeah, a future version of herself in comic book accurate costume. Of the Scarlet Witch. Headdress, cape, cape, yeah. Just flying towards her. Fucking her awesome. Her eyes go wide and then she faints. Yeah. The in my opinion there's a lot more shit that happens in the episode. In my opinion, that was probably the coolest thing. One of no, one of two very cool things. It was definitely one of one of the coolest things, I would agree. Yeah. Um now for those of you that don't know, uh, Marvel did release. It was like a, a limited comic book series, almost like a graphic novel called The Wakanda Files. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically as Shuri, uh, the sister of T'Challa or Black Panther, she's been studying the, the Infinity Stones. This kind of takes place. During that five-year gap of Infinity War to Endgame. And she's been studying the like where the, the Infinity Stones have been. Um, all that stuff and documenting all of it. So the reason in the Wakanda Files that she found why Hydra chose the nation of Sokovia. Not just because... They didn't choose Sokovia just because it was under civil war so that they could kind of operate underneath the radar. But it was because a large number of its residents held a genetic marker. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say what that marker is, but it was a, a unique genetic marker in a higher concentration of people uh, as opposed to other places in the world. And that's why Hydra chose that space. What... I think that genetic marker is would be the mutant X gene. Yeah. And that's kind of hinted at in this episode of WandaVision, especially earlier in the episode where a young Wanda kind of already has yeah. witch powers or at least intuition. Which should be really... Okay, it's clearly not the case. Is there a ghost in there? There might be. It might be. So my theory is that it the, the genetic marker that Hydra found uh or saw in all these people of sokovia was the mutant x gene which would make sense because we are getting the x-men and the mutants into marvel now well i mean yeah. it's always been in marvel but now disney's marvel yeah into the mcu um with that being said it also kind of ties into the fact that wanda kind of already had her powers <laughs> so by kind of already hinting that Wanda already had her powers, that's kind of how they can introduce the mutants later on down the road. But next in the episode, after leaving the, the Hydra base, what happens, Jake? Uh, so then after the Hydra base, they uh, Agatha opens up another portal slash door, and they go into... Um... Shit, sorry. Uh, they go into, what is that? The Avengers compound. The Avengers compound. Where so they show Wanda sitting on her bed. Vision comes into the room through the wall instead of the door. 
Um, Wanda basically says, um, what are you doing here? And he's like, did, oh, fuck. Yeah, he was like, uh, I thought that maybe you would want to talk about everything. Cause <laughs> you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> Cause, uh, I got so distracted between us talking and my dog <laughs> and then coming back to it. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, do you want to talk about it? Cause she's. And Wanda basically says, why would I want to talk about it? Uh, the only thing that would make me feel any better is seeing him again. And by that, uh, she's talking about her brother Pietro, because this takes place right after Age of Ultron. Uh, so basically, Pietro has just died. So on top of losing her brother, she also lost her best friend. Uh, in the comics, uh, if you read the comics, kind of like brother with benefits... What are you doing, twin bro? <laughs> They're twins. Sorry, uh, mom. <laughs> in, in, sorry, mom. In the comics, uh, uh, Pietro and Wanda have a incestual relationship. Uh, yeah. In the movies, <laughs> they don't. Well, we don't know that. We don't know that, but... Uh, we also don't know that they did. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um. <coughs> part, part of what we were going to talk about, until we got this breaking news that Chad was talking about in the beginning of the episode, we were going to talk about the uh, funniness that it... Funniness? Is that a word? Yeah, it can be. The funniness that uh, uh, in the Godzilla movie, the first Godzilla movie... Aaron Taylor Johnson, who plays Quicksilver, and uh, Wanda, who is played by Elizabeth Olsen, played by Elizabeth Olsen, uh, are husband and wife, and they play brother and sister in Marvel, which was kind of funny to us because in the comics they bang each other. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna save the Kong versus Godzilla stuff for next week because we got some other news. Uh, last minute and we really want to talk about that we'll get to that later but <laughs> so uh vision <laughs> i'm sorry i can't get over it. uh so vision is what are you doing step bro <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> get away from me uh, <laughs> but so vision is still you know there for wanda that's kind of where their relationship starts and he you know he's there he comforts her listens to her as she talks about you know like her feelings of feeling you know lost alone. and yeah. alone and and, and then everything like that well and then but, vision kind of gives some pretty cool context to himself because he basically says i've never had anybody to lose so i don't know what you're going through i've never loved anybody before so i don't have that to fall back on like so but then because before vision was vision he was a computer program yeah he was nothing yeah he came to life via tony and uh the stone yeah and bruce and, banner <clears throat> yeah so he doesn't he doesn't know anybody he doesn't have relationships with anybody he doesn't have any family to lose so but then he says the the line to Wanda and it kind of like gives her perspective a little bit at least in the moment and probably further on um, was that the fact that she's grieving should be a good thing because that's proof that love is surviving that love is prevailing um, and that's kind of where that scene ends and Agatha is like so let me get this straight your parents are dead. Your brother is dead. Vision is dead. Everyone that you've ever truly loved is gone. And she's starting to kind of piece together a little bit more about Wanda. And so... Why she's <clears throat> gray. Yeah, why she's kind of gone mad and the whole Hex situation exists. <clears throat> and... Agatha was like, so once Vision was gone, you had nobody. 
so you wanted him back. And Wanda, under her breath, says, I I wanted wanted him him back. back. And then she... And then another door appears. And without hesitation, Wanda just fucking... Wanda goes right through it. She doesn't even wait. Because now she remembers... Excuse me. And so the door that opens is to the sword compound that we see in episode four, Mm -hmm. uh, where Monica goes, but it's sword headquarters. Um, And it shows Wanda walks straight up to like the desk. She's like, I know he's here. I came back and he wasn't here. And I know you guys have him. I want to bury him. Like, yeah, he deserves a funeral. The phone rings. Yeah, the phone at the front desk rings. It's the... Senor Dickhead. Oh my <clears throat> god. Uh, basically says Hayward. <clears throat> yeah, Hayward basically says to the receptionist or the front desk man, "Let her back. I want to talk to her." I like that part too, because they're like, "Oh, Miss, you need a key," and she's like, "I got it." Bam! And just, like, blows the door open. Yeah, she goes towards the door <laughs> to go into the back part of the, the compound. And the guy's like, oh, miss, I gotta buzz you in. And she's like, don't worry about it. And she, like, uses her magic, blows the doors open, starts walking down the hallways. It follows her as she, like, navigates, because he's like, it's two lefts and then a right. Uh, she goes through the hallways, <clears throat> ends up at the end of the hallway, and there's a door. It says, Director. Hayward's office. The door opens. It's director Tyler Hayward, who we've mentioned before. He's a prick. Yeah. Um, but it shows him. He's like, Wanda Maximoff, so great to finally meet you. Truly an honor. And he's totally kissing ass. And <laughs> Wanda's like, I want his body. I am his next of kin, mm-hmm. <clears throat> according to his living will. I want his body. I want to bury it. And he's like, well... I got to show you something. Yeah? That's what he says. Oh, yeah. He's like... I, I was like, <laughs> I don't oh, have to you show have you something. to show me no. something. No. That's what no. he says. He's like, I want to show you something. Takes it, it to a window. Yeah. And down below is where you see a dismantled But it doesn't body. look like... To us, who the viewer, we know that it's Vision. But yeah. to Wanda, she doesn't catch on right away. She's like, what is this? What are you showing me? I don't understand what I'm looking at. And he goes, you said you wanted to see Vision. There he is. And then she looks closer, and you get to see the doctors are, like, pulling him apart. And, like, it's kind of cool because, like, the when they're, like, pulling his arm off of his elbow, like, the mechanics in his arm, they look like veins, like, coming apart. Yeah. And which also shows, like, how, like, intricate Vision is. Yeah, was. He, he was built as a human body, just with yeah. mechanical parts. And they, and then one of the doctors, like, or not doctors, like mechanics, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> steps out of the way, and then heavy you get to diesel see, engine workers. Yeah, you get to see Vision's decapitated head uh, with the mind stone that got fucked out of his head by Thanos. And yeah, and then yeah. she basically starts crying and is like, "Stop doing what you're doing." Hayward's like, "Problem is, Wanda." He's not your property. You can't have him. And Wanda goes, all right. Bam. Pulls up the window. Floats down. Uh, all the doctors run out of the way. And then guys with guns show up. Yeah, they all start pointing their guns at her. Uh, <laughs> Director Hayward is like, stand down. Let her, let her see for herself. And at this point in time, you're like, he's... He doesn't seem like the dickhead that we've met in previous no, episodes. No, you definitely feel that. I, th- I He was I, doing it on purpose. He wanted this to well, happen. I think that's just only because we've already seen like his true colors. No. But in those scenes, I was like, he seems like he's trying to be like there. I think he was trying to let her see for herself that there was nothing left of Vision that she thinks that there is. That he's just a machine... Well, he did make the comment that, you know, we can't just let you take his body because... Three billion dollars worth of... Yeah, but he also... I almost said adamantium. (laughs) (laughs) A vibranium. Uh, But he also makes the comment that not everyone has the power to bring Bring their loved ones back back to life. life. And she's like, I can't do that. So it seems like he wanted her to try and bring him back to life. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what she does is she walks up to the body. She puts her hand over his head. You see her hands start to glow red like she did in at the beginning of Infinity War. Um, she says, I can't feel you. Yeah, I can't Starts feel crying. you. Basically meaning that she's accepting that like he is dead. Starts it's crying. Dead. And then she leaves. She doesn't take the body. She just walks away. Which we... Which we'll get to at the yeah. end of this segment here, but which we as the viewer, not as the nerds talking to you right now, yeah. you think that she has the body, Vision's body, in yeah. the hex. We were led to believe that she stole the body when she... She did not. She, and we're also led to believe that she broke into S.W.O.R.D. Which she, which she didn't. also did not. She was, she was let, let in. in. She just bypassed a door lock and that was it. Yeah. And broke a window. Yeah. But that's it. Fuck the window. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's class. What's that going to cost? A yeah. couple hundred dollars? So anyways, she leaves uh, leaves Vision's body there. Um, she gets in, She goes out to the parking lot, gets in her car. And on the front seat of the car... You see a, an open envelope, but nothing of what's actually inside of it yet. Not yet. So she drives... She drives north. <clears throat> she, you see her cross state lines sorry i'm like dying because we're like finishing each other's sentences <laughs> in the past couple minutes anyways go ahead we finish each other's sandwiches. sentences oh that's what i was gonna say <laughs> sorry frozen yeah joke. frozen i knew it yeah. um but so she drives north you see that she crosses into new jersey state lines she takes the same exit that monica takes in episode four to go to westview, westview. new jersey but then she just drives into town, and it's a normal suburban town. It's a little rundown. I mean, it's just like a. It's a small, town. It's a it's small a, town. It's a town in New Jersey. Yeah. I mean, they all probably look that decapitated, yeah. like <laughs> decrepit. Uh, decapitated. De decap. Yeah, I yeah. meant to say decrepit, <laughs> uh, because it's New Jersey, and that's America's butthole. Oof. Um, yeah, I said it. Oof. It's no Jacksonville, but it's close. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, so she's driving through town. We see a couple familiar faces of... Herb. Like Herb. Uh, we see Frank, the guy with the big old mustache. We see Deborah Jo Rupp. I forget what her name was in Miss, the show. Mrs. Hart. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Um, she looks good, too. She got straight, straightened hair. Yeah, everyone looks modern. It looks like a normal town. Yeah. She's driving through. They're all kind of living their lives. But yeah. they, all, they all look a little sad, too, though. Yeah. Like, you know, they they live in a smaller town, whatever. But she drives up into, like, what viewers would recognize as the neighborhood of where Wanda envisions houses. Yeah. It's an and empty lot, basically, that she pulls lot. up to. Yeah. But you recognize just the, the foundation yeah. is, is late as all. And she gets out of her car, grabs that letter, opens it up. And what what's written on the letter? Oh, it says where we can grow old together. Something variation of that with a yeah. heart written by Vision to Wanda. Basically, he had bought this land for the two of them to start a life together. To build a house and have a life together. Yeah. So Wanda drops to her knees, starts crying, and then some cool shit happens. When she drops to her knees, she's crying. And then... She screams or yells just out of a broken hearted pain. But when she does that, uh, red energy, like what we've seen she uses for her, her magic or for her powers, just explodes out of her. Out of her chest instead yeah. of her hands, which yeah, is a big deal. Like straight, it's from her heart. Yeah. It just explodes out. It expands all of a sudden this the house the starts house that coming she's together in yeah is starts coming together starts forming it starts getting built on its own and then a second boom yeah. from the chest which creates the hex that expands over the town and then you see coming again out of her chest is this like yellow energy forming into like a veiny looking body of mm -hmm. vision yeah which it ends up being vision and then it starts or it ends with 
vision uh starting the first episode season or season one <laughs> uh episode one of this season uh saying um welcome, welcome home. home wanda would you like to stay in tonight all in black and white uh so yeah. that was kind of cool it was really cool to see but it also shows that one she never stole the vision's body she never stole his body she created vision yeah in this in westview inside the hex Just, which would explain why in he, episode six when he tried to leave the hex his body started coming apart so in my opinion and i think it's shared opinion with chad and i won't eat up this whole thing but uh i think that wanda recreated vision's consciousness she didn't recreate his i mean there is a body but if he leaves the hex the body will cease to exist yeah. so there i think she recreated vision's mind his consciousness yeah his soul if which you is will. why in that episode episode six when he's trying to leave the hex he's still vision he's trying to help the people even though he's like coming apart he's still trying to tell the people of sword like these people in here need your help he doesn't give a shit about himself because he right. is the embodiment of vision mentally yeah and that also explains why if any of you have noticed during the episodes uh his eyes never looked robotic they nope. always looked human. human yeah yeah I think that was kind of the, there's a little bit of a, if you watch the episodes and pay attention, at the end of every single episode, no matter what, the right before the credits roll, or during the credits, I should say, they roll, they zoom in on Vision's eyes. Yeah. Every episode. After all that happens, Wanda's standing in the living room alone. It's no longer, like, it's not black and white, but it is that... 60s style era furniture yep and there's bright studio lights shining down on her showing her that it is a sitcom set yep and then you hear a clapping from from like where the audience the would live sit. audience would sit yeah yeah but it's just agatha sitting by herself so she claps a couple of times snaps her fingers Got poof it. into like a purple cloud disappears Wanda looks around for a couple seconds, and then you start hearing the twins. The boys again. that we've been missing since the last episode. Yeah, they're S screaming, screaming for, for help. Yeah. yeah. So Wanda runs out of the studio, basically, out onto the street of Westview. And, and Ag Agatha is floating in the air with two... I don't. What do you? Purple like leashes? Lassos. Lassos. Leashes? Yeah, yeah, lassos is better. Choking the kids. Uh, they're both screaming for help, and we get the coolest fucking thing since Wanda has come to screen. We get yeah. what is it, Chad? So Agatha is hovering, and she's like, "I always wondered how you did this. You're supposed to be a myth." What you possess is chaos magic. You Do you know what that makes you, Wanda? That makes you the, the Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch. So dope. Ha! So dope. We between, finally... Between seeing her in her comic accurate fucking costume earlier in the episode, uh, which you don't see her face as like a silhouette of herself basically like through light. Still fucking amazing. Yeah, but we also get... Probably closer to an actual comic book accurate costume of her on the Halloween episode. Yes. yes. But the, the silhouette that we see earlier in the episode of her in her comic costume is... It was so cool. More realistic, I guess. Yeah. More modern. Also. Not as com like comic-y. Not yeah. as comical. Yeah. Yeah, it was more like what you would imagine like a series. If it was real. Yeah, like a series. Um, yeah. and, and then to finally get to hear her being called Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch. Which... We haven't been able to because, because of, of rights, legal rights yeah. from Fox yes. and everything like that. But now they're able to retcon it. They can bring it back. Yeah. She's now officially been called the Scarlet Witch. Cut to credits. Cut to credits. And episode's over. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just like last episode, there is an end credit scene. Now that it is no longer a sitcom show... If you are watching this show, 
I think, I mean, there's only one episode left after this, yeah. but there will be an end credit scene in the traditional Marvel setting is my understanding. Maybe I'm hoping, Brad, I hope, I hope we get two I think, in, the, in the next I, one, but I don't know. Because that kind of became we'll get well, we get ahead like that's, of ourselves. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. way ahead of ourselves. Uh, we'll so we get an end credit it. scene, and it's basically uh, outside of the hex. It's sword. Um, they basically say it's ready or something like that. Yeah. And they go inside of the inside of the base or whatever, and you see somebody and they like turn a key and they basically say it's ready to come online, and they show. Bunch of like beep beep boops and lights well, coming first, on and stuff. Uh, Tyler Hayward says, "You know, we've taken this thing apart and put yeah. it back together yeah. a hundred of times. We've tried every single power oh, source God. we yeah. could, yes. and Jesus. all we needed was a little bit of magic from the source." Yeah. And then it shows. What, what was the source? It was the drone that had flown through the hex. Uh, what was that? C- episode four. Four. When uh, uh, when Monica first meets up with. Agent Wu. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's the, when they fly the drone in, and Wanda drags it out of the hex, throws it back at Sword. Yeah. So but it's, it's like been glowing, glowing red. With Wanda's red power, magic, stuff. and power. Yeah. 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 The entire time. So I guess now we can call it magic because we're finally there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what they do is they find a way to harness that magic and reapply it. To Which is the same magic that Wanda used to manifest Vision, vision inside of the hex. So and now the they're hex like, itself. Yeah. So now why not use that same power slash magic to reanimate Vision's body? Vision's fucking body, the, which the Sword one had the entire time. Yeah, Wanda never, Wanda had never it. took it. So they had it. They fucking reanimate it using Wanda's magic, and. If you know anything about the comics and whatever, it's yeah. Anti Vision. Yeah, he's known as uh, Anti Vision. He's a uh, bad guy the, version of Vision. The White Vision. He's basically what? yes, he's the White Vision, <laughs> <laughs> the bad guy. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, they're calling it White Vision online right now because I don't know if they've they yeah. haven't officially called him Anti Vision yet. But yeah. Um, but it's a colorless, white, yeah, uh, body. He doesn't have the vision. There's red no and green, red, green, yellow. Nada. None of that's there. But it comes online. He like looks at his hand, opens his eyes, moves it. Fucking cool. And then kind of like smirks. Yeah. And uh, predictions. Well, predictions. Well, so that's that's, that's the, the end, end of the end, end, end of the episode. Scene. So now this is just maybe me and Chad just... Because me and Chad have not actually talked about this at all yet. Or like what we predict is going to happen in the last episode of the show. So well, this is actually kind of fun. This well, is what the this show was supposed to be about. It's just us <laughs> bullshitting, drinking alcohol, and talking. So I'm curious to see where this is going to go. So Anti-Vision is basically Ultron. Yeah. Ultron 2.0. Only he's not... He doesn't have Ultron's mindset. Well, yeah, he does, technically. He kind of does, because in the, in the it comics... It's not called Ultron. He right. just has the same idealistics that Ultron had. Because he doesn't have the Mind Stone. He doesn't have that morality aspect. Yes, it's not, all computer like a, programming. He's not compassionate in any way. Yeah. He's just a robot. Yeah, so in the comics, the mm-hmm. anti-vision is... He doesn't care about human life. He still wants to protect the world yeah and Basically, ensure that the planet survives but he doesn't care about humanity Ultron, so, Ultron spent about five seconds being alive before he was like well people gotta die yeah pretty much yeah he basically looked online and was like <laughs> this eh, shit sucks we gotta kill we gotta kill some we gotta kill some people we gotta undo <laughs> this so um but so I think that that's why at the end of every single episode on Disney Plus, where the credits start to roll, it tells you to watch Age of Ultron. Yeah. Because I think they did that on purpose. Was oh, like after it's over, it aud- the yeah. up next is yeah. Age, of, Age Ultron. of Ultron. It Ooh, never has changed like from that. Age of Ultron. That's so funny because I watched it last night and it that it did that. Yeah. 
It's done that for every single That's so episode. Funny. Yeah. I didn't notice they did it for every episode. Yeah, it's never wavered. It's always only suggested to Age of Ultron. Which is weird because... Like, Wanda's character, or Elizabeth Olsen, has shown up in, you know, Captain America Civil War, Infinity War, mm. Endgame. Uh, there's also Jimmy Woo, who's been in other films that, would, that are on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. So, like, if it's suggesting things just based on the actors that are in it, it shouldn't only show Age of Ultron. Yeah. But I think it's because without the Mind Stone... He's Ultron. It's the Ultron programming. Yeah, that makes sense. I like that. And that's such a fucking Marvel thing to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Why wouldn't they do that? Yeah. They're throwing it in your face from day one. And also, this is just kind of a fun quip, because uh, I don't know if we're going to get a major cameo in the final episode. I think we are. They said, Paul Bettany said that Evan Peters is not the cameo that they were talking about when they said we were going to get a... But what also Paul Bettany said was he never said that it was a specific actor. Uh, he never said anything about it being someone surprising after the after evan peters showed up mm. all he ever said was that it's an actor that fans have enjoyed that he's always wanted to act across from yeah and just like i mean paul bettany has trolled us before he's also who do you think it is it could be just the anti-vision you think so that he's he's oh, always wow. wanted to act across from himself. He's never done that before. Well played. It could just be a you giant troll. Fucker, Paul Bettany. If that's the case, I don't even think I'd be mad. No, I, I think either. that's funny. No, it is funny. That's clever. I like that. But where do we think that the final episode's going to go? Because now I don't even know if <clears throat> Mephisto has a huge role. Because we only have one episode left. There's only yeah, he can't have a, a gigantic role. And he if, could just be uh, like a, a, a be, Thanos at the end of the first Avengers cameo. For like the TV shows because they do show his picture in Loki, the Loki series. Yeah, so like, he could just show up like we first saw Thanos yeah. at the end of the first Avengers I would have Avengers liked film. to have seen, if he was going to be the main bad guy and there's only one episode left, I would like to have seen more Mephisto. So yeah. now I kind of I think that they not. might just be hinting at him. Um, that he might get kind of an in credits. I'm kind of hoping kind of he's gonna, like you said, be kind of spread out throughout the TV shows. Maybe throughout yeah. Loki. Maybe, maybe even. Well, I think that he'll play a, a bigger role in like Doctor Strange and maybe Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, with the like portals and yeah, because they're like all that. kind of like tied together now mm -hmm. that magic is more of a thing. Well, I'd like to see some sort of showdown. I mean. I want to see Monica fucking fuck shit up, man, with their new powers. I'm sure that she very well might. Um, but also, I think that, you know, there's there's now two visions. Because they're, they're planning on sending the anti-vision in. Well, I think what we're going to see there is a merging of the two. Yeah. Uh, basically, in Infinity War, they they're trying to split vision from the Mind Stone. And uh, now, if anti-vision goes into the hex, there's a possibility that we could get uh, Wanda to put this consciousness that she created into the anti-vision's body, and then we would get vision back to life outside of the hex. Or that could survive outside of the hex. Yeah. And I would like to see that because I love Paul Bettany. Yeah, I, would, I do too. And I think that him as the vision is <laughs> such a... It's such a fun character, and it provides comedy where there shouldn't be, because he just doesn't fully understand human, human interaction. interaction. Oh. Yeah. Oh, what up? <laughs> um, <clears throat> but it's just hilarious, and I I want more of it. Yeah, that's really what I want. Yeah. Um, Even if he's not like a main, I know that Marvel is going for younger casted. Yeah, so, but he could but, still kind of like show yeah. up here and there, and yeah, I would still like to see him around. Could still, I mean, he could still go off with Wanda, and when 
she appears or he appears, like they can kind of be tied together. Sure. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't think that we're going to see, well, we're not going to see the end of Wanda uh, at the last episode of this. Cause she is going to be in Dr. Strange too. and Spider-Man three and Spider-Man. Yeah. So, I mean, so she's not going to die in this in case anyone's curious. She's going to die so hard and then come back. And yeah. then die again. Okay. And then come. Okay. Wait, this Cavill. isn't. This is not supernatural. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about Superman. Oh, uh, that works too. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. But I think that wraps up episode eight. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, minus the fucking supernatural shit. Uh, uh, that wraps up s- season eight. <laughs> episode, episode eight. Episode eight of, of season one. Yeah. The only season, probably. Yeah. Um, but. <laughs> now we do have some news that we just learned so we record on sundays for those of you that don't know uh we just heard some breaking news just a couple hours ago uh that is very nerd related but before we get into that uh i do just want to quickly talk about our other sponsor this week it is raise energy drinks so just hang on real quick we're going to tell you a little bit about it what's up nerds i wanted to take a minute and talk to you about raise energy an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Raise Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high quality formula to bring a powerful yet sustained energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level. Perfect for anyone at any time and powered by their refresh formula technology, Raise Energy delivers a performance enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, every can of Raise Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code nerd podcast at checkout for 15 percent off your order or if you don't know what you want go ahead and click the link that's in the description for to get a 50 dollars sample pack for free all you do is you cover the cost of shipping again make sure you use promo code nerd podcast at checkout to let them know that we sent you so. Uh, for the second part of the show, we were going to talk about another segment. We had planned it out. We talked about it all week. Uh, we yeah. did. We even went as far as watching the movies. Um, there's three of them. Uh, we won't even say what it is right now. We'll just talk about it next week. Yeah, we had a. Yeah, we'll talk but, about it next week. We had a, a segment planned. Um, but as we are prepping for tonight's episode, we found some awesome news which is nerd related like chad said and uh both of us who have expressed us multiple times on this podcast are pretty excited about this yeah uh amber heard got fired from aquaman 2 justice yes. for johnny justice for johnny yeah so uh from God. what we read we did about maybe 20 minutes of reading into it a little bit before we like yeah. i said this is real last minute um, we've like, been we at, sat down and fans and this it goes we like, were literally talking about the segment that we sh- would have been yeah. doing right now and Jake got a notification on his phone yeah and was like holy shit this just happened <laughs> and I was like that's it yeah we're talking about that today yeah. we'll push that segment for next week yeah absolutely and oh good god <laughs> and uh, this is something that Chad and I both have said multiple times on this podcast is that uh she sucks she's a horrible person yeah she just so for those of you that don't know amber heard used to be married to johnny depp what yeah um johnny depp is so much better than her just in that same sentence you should this is a man who leaves his jack sparrow fucking costume in the back of his car just so that he can go to hospitals whenever he wants dress up as jack sparrow and visit kids in the hospital as jack sparrow like this guy he's he's a fucking national treasure yeah like you cannot change my mind about this like 
Maybe he's done some shitty things in the past. Probably. Who hasn't? I mean, he partied with River Phoenix. I mean, I'm sure he's done some terrible things in the past. At least copious amounts of drugs. (laughs) Yeah, at the strip clubs. Uh, He's definitely probably done blow out of someone's brown eye. Um, I'm going to cut that part because God bless Johnny Depp. Uh, (laughs) I'm not going to cut it. (laughs) But Johnny Depp is phenomenal incredible actor incredibly just giving just charitable look man during the movie sleepy hollow the horse that johnny depp was uh riding in that movie uh they were gonna put it down at the end of the movie because it was old yeah johnny depp bought the horse and still has the horse that's incredible yeah and so for those of you that don't know, uh, while he was married to Amber Heard, they had an incredibly messy divorce. It's still technically in ongoing legal yeah. dispute, but she posted photos online of videos of her like she put makeup on her face to to make it look like he abused her to try so that she could try and get more money from him, et cetera, et cetera. And the she like filed like defamation lawsuits against him, libel uh, lawsuit lawsuits against him. All these things. Lawsuits work. Lawsuits in this case <laughs> do work because she lost every single one of them. Yeah. Turns out Johnny Depp, the worst he ever did was raise his voice at her. Yeah. That's been documented. I mean, I saw I saw some videos where he was like slamming covered doors and shit like that but i mean who gives a fuck slam a covered door pay 13.95 at lowe's and it's or probably Home his Depot house anyway and replace it yeah Sorry, that was a little sexist we can take that out Sorry. well it very well could have been or it was her house but even still give her 13.95 for yeah. her to go to lowe's and then be like i'll replace the door it turns out that she was actually one that that literally beat the shit out of him yeah faked the whole thing but it did, you said, I didn't read this, so I can't speak on it, but you said that she got caught wearing makeup for the, the injuries that she said was she, caused. I think that she eventually admitted that they were fake. Yeah. Um, or someone else proved that they were fake. Okay. Um, maybe it might have been through, like, paparazzi that, like, the next day, like, there were no signs of makeup or oh, anything like that yeah. and no bruising. It. I don't remember the exact As an details actor, of it. You got to be better than that. Yeah, I mean, she has professionals that work for her that do her makeup. Yeah. You would have thought that it would have been better done. Yeah. Can you make it a little less today? Yeah, yeah. But with that being said, it turns out that she was actually beating the shit out of him. Yeah, she would hit him, throw things at him, uh, threw a broken vodka bottle at him, severing the tip of his fucking finger she Cru- cut off his finger cut off his finger and i looked this up before we bone. started this he had to have surgery to have his finger reconstructed just there's so that pictures there's of enough it finger yeah so that he has a full finger and all these things there's audio tapes of her mocking him of him literally just being scared being like hey i called the neighbor he's coming yeah. over and she's mocking him like, what, so that he can protect you? And he's like, no, because you're crazy <laughs> and I need someone here if you're going to keep hitting me. These... There was... I read those some... Those audio recordings were found on her phone. Yeah. They were in her possession. She had the evidence to destroy herself. <laughs> but what's messed up is when all this came public... Warner Brothers, you know, the people that are making this Aquaman is, 2. This is where this ties into the nerd podcast. Sorry, we're just shitting on Amber Heard at the moment. Well, but she deserves it, it at this point. It ties time. into our nerdiness because Warner fans, Brothers Studios yeah. are behind not only the DC comic universe for at least the, the movies cinematic and stuff like that. Universe yeah. Of it, yeah. Well, and the animated universe. It, there, it's Warner Brothers animation. Yeah. But so she was in Aquaman 1. 
she had signed on for Aquaman 2. Had a small part in Justice League, the crap version. Yeah, the Justice League. Yeah. Um, we'll get into that later. <laughs> but uh, on top of the Aquaman and DC part that Amber Heard was a part of, that's also the Harry Potter uh, world. Oh, yeah. Fuck. So, and for those of you that don't know, uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a, kind of a prequel trilogy to the Harry Potter films. Yeah, about Dumbledore when he was younger. Young Dumbledore and Newt Scamander, who wrote a handful of like the textbooks that Harry Potter uses in schooling. They don't talk as much about it in the movies because it's... No. More of an obscure fact. But Johnny Depp plays uh, Grindelwald, who was, on top of just being a very dangerous wizard in the Harry Potter world... He's the bad guy. He was also uh, the best friend of Dumbledore growing up. Yeah. And uh, lover. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yes. 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 They, 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 they were. Did. Yeah, they did. Um, but they fire Warner Brothers fired Johnny Depp because of the bad publicity, the bad press that was going on that Amber Heard started. And they didn't fire Amber they, Heard. They didn't fire her. And they have since recast Johnny Depp's role in those films with Mads Michelson. Mickelson? Michelson? Mick Mickelson? Michelson? Yeah. I don't know how to... Some, one of the... It's along those lines. Um, they have since recast Johnny Depp's role even after yeah. it came out that Johnny Depp was innocent. None of the allegations against him were true. And in fact, everything was put on Amber Heard. This was like last May. And this is why some of you, most of you probably know if you're nerds and following our podcast... There is a hashtag out there that uh, Chad and I have both been saying throughout the series here is Justice, Justice for, for Johnny. Johnny. Because Amber Heard did not get fired from Aquaman, which is the same production company that fired Johnny Depp. And it was and like, what since, the F? And this was last May yeah, when everything came to light that Amber Heard was the guilty party. She was the Psycho. She was the abuser. Everything that she accused Johnny Depp of was a lie. She was literally setting up cameras and purposely, like, triggering him and then videotaping his bad reactions and then playing victim and being like, oh, my God. Like, but he down. never once struck No, he never did her. anything, yeah. The most he ever did towards her was raise his voice. Yeah. No. I mean... Yeah, like a short temper isn't great on camera when you're yelling at your spouse, but like he never abused her where she literally cut off the tip of his cut finger. Cut off his finger. That's wild. But since May, there's been this campaign, the hashtag that we're talking about, the, the Justice for Johnny. People have been talking about boycotting. Uh, this is what we Not were Warner Brothers, yeah. but just Aquaman 2. Anything yeah. that Amber Heard is in. Boycotting it 100. percent And them you should spend still do that. Honestly, like, well, don't she, put don't put her in any more movies. Well, yeah, but to, today it was announced that she was fired. Yeah, fired Finally. from Aquaman too. Woo! And now she's been recast by Amelia, Amelia Clark, Clark from Game of Thrones. Supposedly, supposedly, uh, it's still new. But if that's the case, I'm I'm totally on board with on that. Board. Yeah, I love Amelia Clark. Yeah, I think for she's sure. phenomenal. And in the right setting, I mean, can't even, it, it's going to be Do a... Do you think that that's just a fan thing, though, because her, Amelia Clark and Jason Momoa were... I would quite, love to see it because they have such great chemistry. I think that that's the right choice. They were if husband and wife true, in the first season of to be Game of Thrones. And they, so have such, they have such great chemistry. They're really good friends in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's not true yet, I hope that. I what hope it is. Yeah. True. No, I agree with you. I I love that idea. I just wonder if it's maybe just fans. Well, it said in the, one of the articles that we we're reading that yeah. that was the first choice yeah. because of because of the fans. fans so maybe she hasn't agreed to anything yet, but that's maybe where they're hoping. Well, I mean, to... if Amber Heard was fired today or yesterday and yeah. it just became public today like i'm sure she hasn't agreed to a contract yet yeah. but yeah. even if she 
hasn't, I hope she does. I hope she does too. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And if she has, like, all the more power to her to just to be, like, so ready to also, like, help out her friend's yeah. project. Yeah. And be like, yeah, I'll step up and do it. Yeah. But the the best part of the story, guys, is that even though Johnny hasn't gotten full justice, Amber Heard is gone. Gone. And hopefully, like, I really hate to be the person that wishes ill on someone, a celebrity even. Even celebrities that I don't like. Uh, hashtag Kardashians. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't want to like wish ill on them as people, but what Amber Heard did was so disgusting. Yeah, and so just morally bankrupt. And there's already such a stigma against like men being abused. Like we don't believe them. Like there's so yeah. much stuff that's put down on like men's mental health and yeah. stuff like that that the fact that it was ignored for johnny Depp for so long and he's such a huge name yeah. that the fact that even this little silver lining of we'll justice is fantastic I'll take it yeah just in general if you're an abuser you can get fucked and stay fucked mm. that's all i gotta say mm-hmm. uh i'll leave that there um next week We'll be talking <laughs> next week. We'll be talking about some other yeah. stuff. So, with that being said, yes, uh, Amber Heard's gone. Justice for Johnny. Uh, step one. But next week, going forward, we have the season finale of WandaVision. WandaVision. That's going to be huge. Uh, it's it's going to be great. We're going to talk amazing. about that. We're going to talk about what we were going to talk about tonight before hearing about Amber Heard. Uh, yeah. And mm-hmm. we'll, then we'll be setting up or getting ready for. Schneider Cut. Schneider Cut on the 18th. Yeah. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier on the 19th. So that's going to be the a day big week. after. So if you guys are watching this or listening uh, and you have a suggestion for what we should talk about uh, in between. Yeah. Because there's a week from don't, when. Don't make us choose because we're going we're gonna to choose something weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> please don't. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, if there's something that you want us to watch, I know it's really short notice, yeah. uh, but go ahead, email us at hello at allthingsnerdpodcast.com. You can get a link to everything that we have going on if you just go to allthingsnerdpodcast.com. Uh, on top of that, you can find us on Instagram at allthingsnerdpod. You can find us on Facebook, All Things Nerd Podcast. We do have a TikTok because we're... Yeah, we're 19. We're man children is what yeah. we are. And they're <laughs> silly and funny and we're terrible at it. Uh, but yeah, just find us on online social media. Find us somewhere. We're actually, this is, we've been on uh, YouTube this entire time, but it's just been our logo and vocals, yeah. uh, our recordings. Uh, this will be our first week officially on YouTube with video. So you can yeah. see with full how, video. how handsome we are and uh, how handsome Jake is. How handsome. And the, the potato that sits next to him. Uh, <laughs> I was being so nice to you. And I, you just yeah, well, fucking... you fucked it up. You shouldn't have been. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can also subscribe, like us on YouTube. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, smash that like and subscribe button. Please, please, please follow us. Um, And then also on our website, Instagram, just about anything that we're on, we do have, uh, we have our link tree, which has links to our sponsors, has links to all of our other social medias, places that you can listen to us. Uh, Yeah, places like Crybaby Craig's, you can get 15% off of your Ray's energy drinks. Um, I don't think we actually mentioned it earlier for Crybaby Craig's. Um, We're working on something with Craig. We're going to, I talked to him, we're going to come up with something. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but it'll be some sort of discount somewhere or a coupon or something like that. Yeah, so something special for our listeners, just yeah. for you guys. Um, at Crybaby Craig's, as of right now, still check it out. Yeah. Um, if we have this. It's not expensive. If we have the promo code figured out by the time <clears throat> this episode airs, you'll find the the link with the promo code in the, the notes below. Um, or... Uh, we'll have it figured out within the next like week or so. Yeah. Um, but yeah. we'll get you guys something. So yeah. we'll get it all taken care of for you guys. If there's uh, anything 
like we leave us comments yeah. we want to hear feedback also on our website the all things nerd podcast.com uh there is actually a link that you can click on that says send us a message you can send us a voice message if you don't want to type it out um if you don't know how to type it out or you just want to like talk to us send us a joke whatever it might be we'd love it all suggestions too suggestions for other things, stuff yeah if you want us ask to check us something questions out, Correct us if we said some shit that you know that we're wrong about. We'll no. totally be like, oh, we were corrected by so-and-so, and we checked it out, and they're totally right. We were wrong. This is what actually yeah. happened. You know, please do. Yeah. Um, with that being said, uh, we're going to close out the show here in just a second. All right, guys. Thank you so much, and you guys have a great week. With that being said, we're going to cheers out and stay nerdy. Stay nerdy.